What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Daily Bible Reading Snapshot. Today we're looking at Zechariah 4, 5, and 6 here in the Old Testament. Then we're looking at Revelation chapter 18 in the New Testament. And it's very rare that in the Old and New Testament we read something that is so well put together as these two sections of Scripture we're going to look at today. So if you're going to read Zechariah on your own and not read the book of Revelation, I'd say, hey, there's a great chapter that would describe what's happening in Zechariah 4, 5, and 6. You should check it out. It's that chapter of Revelation 18. So it's kind of cool that we're reading both today. So anyway, here in chapter 4, we see another vision. So remember, Zechariah has seen visions just like John saw visions and just like Ezekiel saw visions. Now we see this vision of a golden lampstand. And what's being described here? Well, Zerubbabel is going to be described here as someone who's going to be building the temple of God and the one who's reestablishing this. And it says God is going to make this happen, not by might, um, not by power, but by my spirit. He says, who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain. What's the point? Is anything going to be too hard for the people that are working for God? Well, here, it's not going to be too hard. God is going to use this guy named Zerubbabel to be a builder, someone who's leading the charge for these Israelites to build this house. Which again, you might be thinking, oh, remember Haggai? He said to build the house of God. That's right. Same time period as Zerubbabel here. Then we see this weird picture of these two olive trees. And there's a weird question that Zechariah asks actually twice. He says, what are these olive trees? What are these olive trees? And the angel kind of like doesn't answer the first time and he has to ask again. He's like, what are these? He says, these are my two anointed ones who stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Now, different interpretations on this, but I think the, the easiest and the most clear from this passage is we've got two figures that are very important here in the book of Zechariah. One is a priestly figure and one is a kingly figure. One we just talked about, the other we talked about yesterday. We saw Joshua and we saw Zerubbabel. So I think these two olive trees are describing Joshua and Zerubbabel. They're God's anointed ones. Remember, anointed one, who was anointed? Well, the prophets were anointed, the priests were anointed, and the kings were anointed. Well, Zerubbabel is like the king, Joshua is like the priest, but really we're looking forward to a king that's going to be also a priest and also a prophet in the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So Speaking of prophecy, chapter 5 talks about a scroll, but it's a flying scroll. It's kind of weird. You can imagine, when I think of the flying scroll, here's the first thing I think of. You know those airplanes that have, like, billboards that they, you know, have behind the plane, and you can read it, and you see it at the beach or whatever? That is basically what a flying scroll is, because it's very interesting. This is a huge scroll. It's 30 feet by 15 feet. The dimensions are given here in cubits. But isn't that even cool? It's like this big, you know, flying, you know, advertisement. But what's the advertisement? What's being advertised? Well, it's the word of God. He says, but you guys have broken God's word. So because the whole world sees God's rules and rejects God's rules, their condemnation is just. Then it says another vision. It's a woman in a basket, which is kind of weird. And the woman is a bad woman. This is not a good woman. This is a bad woman. And this woman is being described. And she happens to be the bad character. And he says, this is the woman called wickedness. This is wickedness. Um, and this woman was pushed in this basket and then carried away to the land of Shinar. Which, the land of Shinar, that's like old, old Testament stuff. That's, that's Genesis chapter 10, 11. Right? The land of Shinar. What are we talking about there? Well, there's a city that sits in the land of Shinar that is kind of an important city. It's the city of Babylon. That's probably what we're talking about here, that this lady represented, kind of like what we read yesterday in Revelation 17, this woman represented here, wickedness, their wickedness. Where is this woman going to go? Babylon. Well, that's what Revelation 17 and 18 is all about. The woman called um, Babylon, who's going to be fallen uh, because of her sin. Now, one last thing here, uh, chapter 6, before we get into Revelation 18, um, Zechariah 6 here talks about another vision of four chariots. And it says there's chariots with red horses, black horses, white horses, and dapple horses, which uh, means spotted or speckled. So these different horses, which again remind you probably of Revelation 6 and the four horsemen right, of John's apocalypse, right? We get a similar thing theme here but what happens is they're supposed to patrol their their, their gods you know that they're, they're from the army of god but it says the black horses are supposed to go to the north country and there's a evil place in the north country that's going to come down and cause problems what is the evil city that from jerusalem's perspective you have to go north what well babylon okay so so much babylon talk here 
And one last thing here, it says there's a crown in the temple. You might see it in rebels like that. Um, but maybe a better way of putting this is God is going to crown Joshua in this last vision here of Zechariah. He's going to put a crown on Joshua's head, and he is going to be the Messiah figure here that is going to be the priest. He's going to be standing between God and men. But the problem is he goes beyond what can rightly be described as describing Joshua. This text goes beyond that. It says, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, he shall branch out from his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. It is he who shall build the temple of the Lord, and shall bear royal honor, and sit and rule on his throne. And there shall be a priest on his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. Okay, Joshua is a priest now? Like, now the priest has a crown? Is there going to be a time where someone called the branch from Isaiah 11 is going to wear a crown and also be a priest? Yes, in Jesus. That's where the fulfillment is here. So, that's our Old Testament reading here in Zechariah, which the New Testament commentary on, I think, what's going on here in the vision of the basket and the woman and stuff is Revelation 18. And Revelation 18 is a famous chapter because it's all, it's a, most of it's a song, right? There's a lot of chapters about songs in the Bible, right? Luke 1 has a song. First um, Samuel chapter 2 has the song of Hannah. Uh, Exodus 15 has the song of Moses, right? Well, here's another song, an important song here in the Bible. Revelation chapter 18, but it's a song of judgment. It's a worship song to God about how evil the, the people are in Babylon and how God's going to bring them a just judgment. So it says, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird and every unclean detestable beast. For all the nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. And the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her. And the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious livering. Like that's the kind of the summary statement. And then John's going to break down all those, what those mean with more information about those songs. So first, the idea is this world system is going to be torn down. And it says this world system did something to the people of the earth. He, this world system described here is like this woman seduced the whole world to commit the immoralities that she's promoting. It's a lot like the world today where the world wants to bring you in on all of its sin. And that's what it says. And, and the idea is one of the things that God says is, hey, my people, get out. If you're in Babylon, get out. Run out of town. Run away from the sin that's going on here because God's going to bring judgment on this city. But the city... Babylon, um, again, I don't think is an actual city called Babylon. I think this is a description because John's taking what he's seen. Right? And I think God is showing him the similar descriptions that we saw in the Old Testament to the actual city of Babylon and saying here, there's going to be all of this stuff that takes place. That's exactly like what happened with Babylon. And specifically, there's a chapter in the Old Testament that's important. Um, Isaiah chapter 46, where God says that Babylon sits and says, I will never be a widow. I will never be put to shame. I am and there is no one else. That's what this Babylon character says. And God shows in Isaiah 46, well, this Babylon character is going to be taken down. That's what we see here. But what's the point? God is going to judge all of these people who take part in the sin of the world. So it's not just that God's going to tear apart the world system and the sinful structures. That's not the only thing here. What God's going to tear apart is not just the, the sin of the world, but also those who attached themselves to the sin. And there's ways that we can do that if, if you choose to engage in the sin of the world, to tie yourself up with all the sin that's going on in the world, you now become a part of the problem. And it says God's going to judge you along with this world system, this city, this evil city. Which again, when I say world system, I'm not talking about everything that the world is, is bad. That's not the point. But at the end, there's going to be an evil world system that you do not want to be a part of. That's going to be primarily run by that guy called the beast. So it says here that kings were were stuck because they got in trouble with with this uh, this lady and also the merchants and the merchants you could imagine if it's a big city you can make a lot of money by buying and selling what's going on in this city the merchants the people who are even engaging in the commerce they are in trouble too so super interesting here and that God says here at the end verse twenty one to twenty four an angel throws a millstone into the sea and it says just like that. A big millstone, this big concrete donut gets thrown into the sea. Will that ever be dug up? The answer is probably not. If you throw a big concrete donut to the middle of the ocean, you're never getting that thing back. I mean, I don't know. You'd have to really work hard to get a submarine and it's got to go low enough. And then it's got to get this huge, massive object up. I don't think there's any way that you're getting that out. 
And that's the whole point. This evil world system will be thrown into the heart of the sea, which remember in Revelation, sea and death correspond with each other. That's why in Revelation 20 and 21 and 22, it says there's no sea. That just means there's no place of death. Just like here, be thrown into the heart of the sea and they'll die. This world system will come to an end. And that's the point here. The world system will come to an end and Jesus will reign as the king. There will be no more evil, no more suffering, no more pain because the former things have passed away and Jesus will be the ruler of everything. And everyone who's in his kingdom will live a perfect, satisfied, eternal life with him. It's going to be awesome. So that's why we can worship even in the midst of judgment. We can say God is to be praised even though bad things are going on in the world because God's going to accomplish everything he purposes to accomplish in the end. So thanks for reading. We'll see you back tomorrow for the Daily Bible Reading Snapshot. Thank you.